Over the last couple of weeks, I've had the chance to bring you guys some exclusive early access Six Days in Fallujah gameplay, and today I get to share with you the big news, and that is that Six Days in Fallujah will release into early access on Steam on June 22nd of 2023. The trailer for their launch is out right now, and I've also got some exclusive new gameplay to be able to share with you guys provided to me from the developers, and then stick around on Thursday, I'll be sharing some more gameplay from me and the guys as well. While I'm playing this stuff in the background, I'm going to roll through their press release and pull out some of the more interesting details that caught my eye as I went through it. And I learned a lot about the game and what is to come in the early access version of the game and then later versions as I look through this thing. So you'll enjoy some of these new features, no doubt. So the press release goes through kind of the origins of Six Days in Fallujah, how long it's been in development, the story of, you know, it initially being canceled when it was under a different publisher and then migrating over to Victora and Highwire Games. And that brings us to where we are today as it launches into early access. They highlight some of the features that I have kind of called out in my previous gameplays that won't be any surprise to you. Among that is the procedural architecture. They describe it as procedural ar architecture that reshapes the inside and outside of every building each time the game is played. Just like the real battle, players never know what to expect. That goes into a little bit more detail about the way the procedural generation occurs. So it's not like they're planting buildings in new locations instead the buildings themselves are changing from the outside appearance the inside of appearance the layout and you know having played through it for many hours at this point i can say that it is 100 percent sufficient and from a level design perspective makes a lot of sense because you get something that is playable each time but also something that is completely unique and new each time and the next thing they highlight is their block scale AI. This is kind of interesting. And, you know, looking back at my gameplay, it makes sense. But they describe their block scale AI as a dramatic new approach to AI based on insurgent tactics from the battle. Unlike games in which AI is constrained to move in very small areas, AI enemies in six days can go anywhere on the battlefield and they will stalk, flank, ambush. Uh, and they'll coordinate their attacks with each other and lure players into difficult situations. We've definitely seen that. Um, they feel extremely elusive during the assault and then very aggressive during the counterattack. And it's good to know that they're not going to be restricted to like one specific building the entire time. And instead, they have the freedom to choose where to go to best maneuver against the player. So that's a, a really cool way to do AI. And so far, everything I've seen of the AI in the game has been done really well. And it just creates a very immersive experience. Then they highlight the global dynamic lighting and the tactical indoor and outdoor sandbox we've seen this you know time and again the environment looks incredible the lighting is insane the audio design is out of this world um, and uh, and they nail that then the tactical indoor outdoor sandbox piece um, it's you know you're not on rails it's not you know a story dri driven on the rails first person shooter experience instead they drop you into a large open space with a bunch of complex terrain and objectives and then they challenge you to get through that scenario in any way that you choose to do it so bravo then they go in to describe what we can actually expect in the early access version of the game. They say, in early access, six days in Fallujah will focus initially on the experiences of U.S. Marine fire teams on the first day of the battle. As early access develops, players can also choose to play cooperatively as, wait for it, wait for it, special operations or Iraqi soldiers fighting alongside coalition forces. Pretty interested to see what that entails. Uh, we know that there was a large Navy SEAL presence during the Battle of Fallujah. I suspect that that would likely be the soft presence that we emulate in the game, but I am pleased to know that there will be other factions that are playable besides U.S. forces. You'll be able to play as Iraqi security forces or as special operations. I'm also excited to see the new gear and then what those missions look like. Uh, and then players will be able to encounter civilians as the battle progresses. This is something that has been discussed on and off. I think I've seen some developer comments in it in the, about it in the past. This is the first time I've ever seen that confirmed, that there will be civilians on the battlefield. Um, and I think that's a brave move, frankly, on the on behalf of Victoria in an environment uh, where they're already under a lot of scrutiny um, for portraying this battle for reasons that I won't dive into, but I also don't understand. Um and so I'm glad they're doing it because um, civilians are a reality in combat and there were civilians despite, you know, that portion of Fallujah being isolated and civilians told to evacuate for weeks leading up to the battle, there were still civilians present. And so that's going to create some interesting dilemmas for players. And I, I think that's an important step for the game. They also say Victoria also plans to release additional cooperative missions as well as a story campaign um, recreating real stories from the Second Battle of Fallujah from both the perspective of coalition and Iraqi civilians. So I 
definitely look forward to that one. Um, they go into the history of the game again, and then, uh, yeah, then they double tap the release date and the price. So the early access version of the game available on the Steam store on June 22nd, 2023, the launch price is going to be $39.99, so 40 bucks pretty much on par with what I would expect of a game of this quality in early access with, you know, a decent amount of content and infinite replayability with its terrain features launching into early access. So very pleased to hear that. Then they also confirmed that a release of the game is expected to be available for both console and PC in its full version in 2024. Uh, definitely check out their YouTube channel. Check out their website, guys. Uh, also, make sure you follow them on Twitter. They've got a ton of information that they're putting out regularly. And make sure you stick around here because I will be sharing more as it becomes available to me. And, of course, once the early access version drops, I will be playing that quite a bit with the guys and sharing each one of those missions with you guys as well. If you have any questions, any comments, any feedback, any initial thoughts on the features that I just listed here, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. I'm eager to hear your feedback and I'll respond to comments as appropriate. The developers have been watching my comments closely and your feedback is getting to them. So make sure you keep providing that. And I'm also curious to see what you guys thought about the trailer. Um, Pretty cool, huh? Very uh, horror-like game vibes. I'm Control Pairs. This has been Six Days in Fallujah. And I will see you guys in the next one.